President Biden is pushing for the release of the remaining hostages in Gaza. On Tuesday, he met with four-year-old Abigail Moore Adan at the White House. Abigail is a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen and the youngest American hostage to be released by Hamas to date. She was taken by the group on October 7th after militants killed both of her parents. Abigail spent 50 days in captivity before being released. Liz Hirsch-Naftali is four-year-old Abigail Adan's great aunt. She was in the meeting with President Biden, and she's on set with us now. Uh, Liz, thank you so much for taking the time to come in and speak with us. First of all, how is Abigail doing? How has she been doing since she was released by Hamas in November? First, thank you for having me. Um, you know, she's a beautiful, Abigail's a beautiful four-year-old, full of life and energy, um, just wants to have fun, play, sing, dance, move, lots of energy, very smart, um, and she's loved. She lives with her aunt and uncle and her brother and sister have moved and now are part of their family, so they're six kids. Um, and she's, you know, loved and given a lot of support and has gone back to nursery school and she has the semblance of what we would hope is a normal life for a child and a beautiful opportunity to have a, a normal life. And of course, we don't know what the results are of having seen both her parents murdered in front of her or being a hostage for 50, 51 days, being silenced, being um, given very little food and um, put in a dark room and told you can't laugh or cry out loud, a child. So it's a balance. But what I will say is that she is loved and on the outside, she's doing you know, quite well. Um, tell us about the meeting with President Biden. What took place during that meeting? Well, you know, it's interesting, like a meeting, she's four years old. So the meeting was really beautiful. And Abigail and her siblings and her cousins, all children four to 12 years old, they entered into the Oval Office. The president greeted them at the door and they all had painted um, little pictures for him with little notes and they handed them to him. And he thanked them, but he, he also had an opportunity to talk to them and understand where they are and their trauma and listen to them and express his also understanding from his own family and his own loss. So even though they're little kids, he was able to talk to them in a way that was very, um, it, it broke the ice. It was very warming and very loving. And, um, and, you know, the one thing that he said to the adults in the same breath after he spoke to the kids was, this moment is very important that we can see this child who was freed and at the same time, it was a reminder, and Abigail is a symbol, of the fact that there are still 133 hostages, eight Americans, people from 17 nations that are all hostages. And he is 100% committed with his administration and his leadership to doing everything he can to bring these citizens and these people home to their families. Uh, on that point, uh, President Biden is one of more than a dozen world leaders who have signed this joint statement demanding the immediate release of the remaining Israeli hostages. Do you think that request will be heard? I hope it's heard. And I believe that Hamas is listening. And I believe that people in the region are listening. And I think that it's important because what sometimes gets lost is you just throw around numbers and these are 133 people, children, mothers, fathers, grandparents. And the part that I think people need to understand is they come from, they were taken, kidnapped, dragged over the border in Israel into Gaza, but they are citizens of these 17, and there's some other nations, but the 17 that signed this um, letter are all the, these are their citizens. And so I think that it makes sense because it, it tells the world and it tells the Hamas leadership these are people that come from all these nations. And the one thing that that letter said um, is that the immediate release, they demand the immediate release of all of these 133 people. And with that release, you have a prolonged, lasting ceasefire. And then, in addition, you have the ability to bring in a surge of humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people. Because what people sometimes forget is that this suffering that took place, this, uh, this terror that took place on October 7th, not only has resulted today in 133 hostages who are still kept somewhere in the dark tunnels below Gaza, but it also represents this humanitarian crisis for the Palestinian people. So I think these 17 nations coming together, working with America and working with the Gulf states, 
it basically says this is an international humanitarian crisis and we all have to work together to demand the release of the hostages, stop the fighting, and to help the people who are living in Gaza. That has to be everybody's coordinated effort because at the end of the day, Hamas controls the narrative right now. They have the ability to release the hostages, stop the fighting, help the people in Gaza. It's all in their hands right now. If they agreed to this deal, and there is a deal, and they have not agreed, they have rejected it, they are the only ones who have rejected it. If they accept it, the fighting can stop and the region can move forward and people can be taken care of. And that's, I'm here because of hostages, but I'm also here because this is a humanitarian crisis and we need to end it immediately. More and more people each day suffer and die. Liz Hirsch, Naftali, we are so thankful to you to have you here. Um, grateful to hear your perspective and to hear that Abigail is surrounded by such love uh, at this time. Thank you so much for being here, Liz. Well, thank you and thank you for talking about this story and helping to hopefully bring a resolution quickly.